So I'm just going to jump right in for the sake of time. Um, and I'll start off by saying this. A lot of you guys know me by now. You've been coming. And um, so you kind of know my forte. You kind of know where I'm probably going to speak from and what my agenda is. But let me just start by saying this, that in Matthew 10, Jesus makes this declaration. He says, those that receive a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive the prophet's reward. Now, you might say, what's the prophet's reward? Well, I believe that the prophet's reward is the ability to discern the time and season we are living in currently, what it is that's coming more than likely down the road, and how it is that we ought to respond. The Bible says that God does nothing without first revealing his plans and his purposes to his servants, the prophets. In other words, God never wants you and I to be caught off guard. God wants you and I to have eyes to see and ears to hear what it is that the Spirit is doing right now. And God is doing a whole lot. Would you agree with that? There is so much that God is doing that He doesn't want us to be ignorant of. And my goal here this morning is to hopefully, to the best of my ability, with the grace of God on my life, help you understand what I believe God is saying right now. And I believe with all of my heart that God is speaking. In fact, I believe with all of my heart that God is shouting. I'm about to get off this chair. So I've, no, I'm serious. Like I believe with all of my heart. You might say, how do you know God's speaking? Because we all could say... God's speaking. We all know that it's through the presence of the Spirit on the earth today. That's the one through whom we have our communion with God. It's through the person of the Holy Spirit. He's the whole reason why we experience conviction, the whole reason why we feel an impression, the whole reason why we know that we know that we know, the whole reason why His gifts are in operation, the whole reason why we can open the Word and gain revelation and understanding, the reason why we know that there are things that are coming, the reason why He reminds us of the things that Jesus said, promises that He's made. The Holy Spirit is the one through whom you have a relationship with the Father because of what the Son did. And Jesus said, when I'm raised from the dead, when, when this is, I'll pray to the Father that he might send the one who's promised. He said, it's actually better for you that I go, that he might come. What a promise. So we are consistently and constantly learning how to fellowship with God, the Holy Spirit. And I believe he's not just speaking, guys. Like, it's not something that I'm hearing. It's something that I'm feeling right now. And you're feeling it too, whether you realize it or not. God has made a wonderful promise in the book of Haggai. He made a wonderful promise in Hebrews, which we will go to here in a moment. Again, my goal, guys, is just to help you make sense of what it is that's happening. We would have to be living in a cave and hiding under a rock right now to sit here and say that things aren't being shaken. Would you agree, like, everything that can be shaken is being shaken right now? It's on purpose. I'm not saying, and it ha the moment, guys, can you, can you even remember life pre-COVID-19? Pre like, it's so hard to even fathom it. Like, to even look back to mid-March and previously, it's almost like it's insanity to me. Guys, and like, I am telling you, you've been hearing me say it, and I'll continue to say it till the Lord tells me to stop. If there's going to be a new normal in the world, there needs to be a new normal in this church. We desperately need more of the presence of God now more than ever. God is intentionally shaking things up. He has to shake us to wake us. He is intentionally shaking every false place of trust that we put our hope in to get us to realize it's not those things we need to be turning to, it's Him that we need to turn to. He is wanting, guys, nobody is exempt right now from its reverberation. There is a vibration and a trembling right now in the earth. There is more going on than just civil unrest. There's more going on, guys, than just political upheaval. There's more that's going on than riots in the street. There's more than going on than a pandemic. If we're not careful, we're getting distracted by what's being shaken and missing the voice in the midst of the shaking. The whole reason why it's shaking is because it's his voice that shakes it. And he promised, because there was a day in time, God always has a way of raising up voices. God is raising up voices now more than ever to go into his church to make a people made ready for what it is that's about to be poured out. God wants to release a greater outpouring of His Spirit. The Bible says in Acts 2.17 that in the last days, which is now, the day from when Jesus raised from the dead and ascended to the Father until He comes back, that time period is called the last days. There's a last day that's coming. It's called the great and terrible day of the Lord. If you're in the Lord, it's a great day. If you're outside the Lord, it's a terrible one. 
And you'll find out whether or not your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And that day, God's going to open the books and he's going to search. The Bible talks about a book of remembrance. It talks about the Lamb's book of life. I want everything that I do to come from an honest and pure place that it's celebrated in heaven that one day Jesus looks at me in the eyes. I live for this day to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter in the rest of your master. I want to live for that day. So he's causing us to have eternity in mind. There's a shift in focus where it's not about us and it's going to be about him in greater ways. Where we're going to see a church consecrated in ways we've never seen before. Totally set apart, sanctified to receive what he wants to pour out. Because in these last days I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will have visions. And I believe we haven't even seen the total fulfillment of that promise yet. I believe there is more that's yet to come. I believe he's saving the best for last. And I believe the whole point of this shaking, guys, shaking always precedes inheritance. The shaking of God must come to shake what can't be shaken because if it can be shaken, it shouldn't be there. There are things that are shaking in my life right now. There are things that God is bringing to the surface in my life that I'm needing to change in order to prepare for what it is that's coming. Things have to be shaken so that you and I might inherit what can't be shaken. And the only thing that can't be shaken is the kingdom of God in the person of the Holy Spirit. The kingdom, according to Romans 14, 17, is righteousness, peace, and joy, not in your finances, not in your job, not in your family, not in this places where you think are security. It's only in a person, and the person's name is Holy Spirit. And righteousness, peace, and joy are more than just how I feel. It's more than just states of being. It's the power of God in operation. It's the ability to make wrong things right. It's the ability to crush anxiety and depression. It's the ability to set people free. Those that were one day at once bound in sin, the righteousness of Christ has been imputed to us that we might be in right relationship with God and have the audacity to approach his throne with confidence. That's a crazy thing. Do you know that? You can go to him without fear. If we are afraid, it's because his love hasn't yet been perfected in us. Perfect love, the love of the Father, is to cast out fear because fear involves punishment. The only reason why so many find it difficult to be intimate with God is they expect to be punished more than they do to be loved. Because we've grown up in a world that says it's all about what you do, it's all about you got to do in order to get. So we've spent our whole life performing, trying to find our place on the team or in our family or in school, the rat race of life. And then that wants to come on us and we think that's how God relates to us. That's not how it is. He relates to us based on who he is and who he is will change you. It's like when Isaiah had that coal touch his mouth. It's when the holiness of God touches you, that's when you're changed. It's when God comes into your world, that's when you're changed. And he's inviting us now, guys, in this time, now more than ever, to hunger and thirst in ways we couldn't even imagine. God, guys, can I be honest with you? These are just the beginnings of shakings. This is just tremors. You think it's shaking now, wait till November 3rd. Then we'll see how much it's going to get shaken. And I'm here to tell you guys, it's not supposed to scare us, it's meant to happen. It needs to happen, guys. The Bible talks about in Luke 24, Matthew 24, guys, we're not going to pray away Matthew 24. We're not going to pray away rumors of wars and pestilence and all these different things that must happen before the end. There is, there is so, guys, he has promised, the Bible says, now here's the deal. I'm going to tell you a quick story. It's Exodus chapter 19. Here's the deal. Because in Hebrews 12, the Bible talks about that, well, actually, let's turn there. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 12, then I'll get to Exodus 19. Hebrews chapter 12. I'll give you some context for where it is that I'm, that I'm speaking from. Prior to what it is that we are going to read here, here's the context. The writer is contrasting what took place on Mount Sinai with what's supposed to be happening today. And the Bible says in Matthew, or I'm sorry, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25, it says this, see to it. In other words, make sure 
that you do not refuse, that you there is you and I, that you and I do not refuse Him who is speaking. We know that He's speaking because we can all look around. Guys, I said this to Nicole the other day. It seems like, I'm not going to say everybody because that's way too general and that may not be you and you might be doing really well. It seems like most people are on edge right now. Everybody's touchy right now. Like things that usually wouldn't upset them are upsetting them. And it's like the season is catching up to people. It's like people have had enough and now they're just ticked. And it seems like it's coming out in driving. It's coming out in the way we react to each other. There are people right now that are severing relationships with people because where they stand politically. My 12-year-old daughter just had a friend through social media tell her because my 12-year-old daughter put on social media, we are way too young right now to be worrying about a lot of this stuff. And so the friend, a friend piped in and said, well, if you did have the opportunity to vote, who would you vote for? And was pressing my daughter. And so Emma finally just said, look, this is who my family backs. This is who they're behind. The friend said, you and I can't be friends anymore. Peace out. Wish you the best. Goodbye. 12 years old. The dichotomy in the world is worse than I've ever seen it before in my 41 years of living. I've never seen anything. I've never seen a climate like this. I've never seen so much anger, so much division, so much I'm done with you. And it's more, it's, guys, it's totally spiritual. And God is trying to get our attention through it all. Not so that we're right, so that we would humble ourselves and pray. I would rather be known for giving to the poor and washing feet than being right on social media. I'd rather be known for seeing tumors disappear than picking a fight. So here's this window where everything that can be shaken, everything you put your hope in is being shaken so that the only one you find your hope in might remain. So that we might inherit a kingdom that's unshakable that comes from the person of the Holy Spirit. So even the way that we do, everything's being shaken. How many pastors? Well, i got to rethink how I do church. We are finding out, guys, like either either it's going to remain gimmicks and entertainment and filling seats or it's going to be about presence. Because the Bible talks about that when you and I come together, we're coming together like stones being fitted together, Christ Jesus being the cornerstone, us being built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. And when we gather, we're gathering in a people that's gathering to become a temple in the spirit for God himself. So that when we gather, we should experience the presence of God. If he's not there, something's wrong. So in this hour, if you were to say, well, Brian, what is the main thing God is saying right now? Here's the main thing I believe he's saying. It's time for the church to get her house in order. Because the way we, listen to me guys, there's two temples I read about, there's two houses I read about in the New Testament. One is the individual, where we have to decide what's God doing in my life that he's asking me to get straight. Can I be vulnerable right now? For me, it deals with parenting. There's more than one way to get your house in order. Now, I'm not making excuses, I'm giving you background. I didn't grow up with a dad in my, in my family, in my life. The only time I saw my father was on the weekend, so that means the only thing he could ever do was fun things. So my father, he's the most encouraging man you'll ever meet. I love him. If he watches this, I honor him like he's amazing. So I didn't grow up in a home where discipline abounded. I ran, I, my four brothers and I ran all over my mom. I would come home from high school. The one day there was a note on my wall. She said, I can't take it anymore. I'm leaving you guys. I felt bad for one day. The next day I was back to my same old, same old stuff. My wife comes from a completely different background. She grew up with a stern Catholic upbringing where she was terrified to get out of line and would often find herself apologizing consistently and incessantly like for stuff that she didn't have to apologize for. So now you bring those two worlds together. That can be an interesting mix. One of the ways 
that you and I are a people made ready is when the hearts of fathers are turned to their kids and when the hearts of kids are turned to their dads. And as a father, one of the ways your heart is turned to your children is through disciplining them. Because I'll tell you who I am as a dad. I am the counselor. I want to know why you're doing what you're doing. Like, I want to be your friend. I want to hear your heart. And sometimes, guys, at the age of 12, 8, and twins that are 7, they don't necessarily need that right now. And sometimes, guys, and you know what's happening? We're taking back the power in our house, and it's because what you tolerate is your culture in your home. And God is wanting to bring order to the house through a united front that lets the kids know this is what's acceptable and this is what's not. And then you find out the fight is we gave up more ground than I thought we did. And we're learning how to take it back. I said, Emma's sitting here. I said to her, I said, honey, I said, the Lord is really telling us to get our house in order so that we might experience a greater outpouring of the Spirit. So don't be surprised if Daddy's a little more stern and firm. She goes, okay. <laughs> Didn't, you? Didn't you say it to me? Like, why are you telling me this? <laughs> of course, a lot of times when we think about getting our house in order, we think about dealing with hidden sin in our life, and all that's true. I mean, there is so much shaking that's happening, like issues of the heart, like jealousy, pride, envy, like all these different things, guys, are coming up, and like God is wanting to say, like, I want you holy, con- I want you to deal with those areas. You might say, how do you deal with them? You hit your knees. You realize there's no way you can make yourself like him. You couldn't save yourself. You are definitely, you don't have it within yourself to make yourself look like him and be like him. You humble yourself. You realize that these are issues and areas in your life that you can't change and only he can. That's called humility. That's complete dependence on God. I'm telling you guys, all across the board, there's so much right now that, that, that people are dealing with, whether it's like I, th- being afraid of confrontation or like, you know what I mean? Like there's so much right now, like even the way that you and I treat each other, like the way, the way praise functions, like we need to learn how to honor each other and not have factions or divisions. Like we need to learn how to support and love and come together because that unity is attractive to the Lord, seeking reconciliation and forgiveness getting the house in order, being a people made ready. That's what Moses did with the people when God brought them out of Egypt, which is symbolic of you and I through Christ being forgiven and set free of sin. The whole purpose why God said, let my people go, is it said he wanted to bring them to himself. So Moses leads the people out, and God has a way of raising up people that are lead. God is raising up people to lead us into something right now. If we have ears to hear, the shaking is on purpose. God is shouting right now, and this is just the beginning of it. So Moses brings the people to the mountain, and God tells Moses, have the people consecrate themselves, which means have them to be ready, like make sure that they are set apart to me. Have them wash their garments today and tomorrow. That's two days to do your laundry. That was a ritual cleansing. In the Old Testament, you'd oftentimes read about ritual holiness, ritual washings. It was symbolic of ultimately what God was going to perform in us one day, where there would be a moral washing, a holy cleansing on the inside. And the whole time they're washing their garments for two days, they're preparing their mind and their heart to meet with the one who is going to come down on the mountain. So God comes down. See, now here's the other thing. Preparation precedes visitation. God is wanting us to prepare for him to come in a greater measure. Get your house in order. So the people come out to meet with him. He comes down on the mountain. There's fire. There's a dark cloud. There's peals of Lightning and flash, flashes of lightning, peals of thunder, and the people are freaked out because the entire mountain is trembling. And it was in that, see, the shaking had to happen before they were about to receive what it meant for them to be in covenant relationship with God. They were shaken to the core. They were prepared. So the shaking, guys, the, the reverberation, the quaking right now is to get us to get prepared for the ultimate shaking that I believe is coming that's going to precede what he's going to pour out. 
So they come and they're standing there at the mountain. They can't even bear the commandment of God. See, and the other thing too that concerns me is there's a scene in John chapter, I'm out of time. Uh, Let me just say this. In John chapter 12, there's this scene where Jesus prays to the Father and says, Father, glorify your name. A voice from heaven comes and says, I have glorified it. I will glorify it again. There were people that were present that said this. That was just thunder. There were people that were present and said, that's just an angel talking to him. In a rare and privileged occurrence, the audible voice of the Father pierced that scene and the people couldn't recognize when God was talking. See to it that you do not refuse him who is speaking. Hebrews 12, 25. And I've been praying and I invite you to pray. I've been praying, Lord, would you please help us to hear. I pray that we're not getting, I am thankful for everything that is being shaken. Guys, there is so much exposure right now that needs to happen. So much stuff that's coming out that God is dealing with because you can't get away with it for long. And there's an invitation right now for you and I to cleanse ourselves of all defilement of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. We need the fear of God. That revelation, it's like Roland Baker said, he's big, you're small, and you mess with him, you're in deep trouble. There's a truth to that. You don't exist, or I should say, he doesn't exist for you, you exist for him. And there is freedom in that reality. It's a joy to give him my whole heart and life and to love him with all that I am because that's what I was made for. And when you use things in accordance for the reason why they were made, they work in accordance with it. You don't put sand in a gas tank, you destroy the engine. You don't put metal in a microwave, you start fires. You live for yourself, life is a disaster. You give it to him, and make him your master, because to be honest with you, we are a terrible Lord, and we were never meant to live our life apart from him. God is shaking everything that can be shaken to get our attention, that we would hit our knees and cry out and ask him to pour out what he's promised, because preparation precedes visitation, and the shaking precedes the inheritance. You follow? Make sense? Okay, I'm going to pray. If you didn't get it, watch the first service, okay? All right, Father, I thank you right now. I know it was short. I know I had to go fast. Jesus, we honor you. We love you. I pray, as Heather prayed, that these words would just touch and bless somebody in this room. God, that they'd feel the conviction of Jesus resting on them, the conviction of the Holy Spirit, that you would help us to be a people made ready, because that's exactly what you told Moses. Have the people be made ready. What did John the Baptist do? Made a people ready. What did Elijah do? Turned the heart of the people back to God. And what happened as a result? The hand, a hand the size of a cloud and the sound of a mighty shower that was coming. Preparation precedes visitation. Help us to understand what it means to actually genuinely get our house in order. Whether it's dealing with hidden sin or dealing with issues like pride or even on a parental family level, what does it mean to get our house in order for what it is that's coming? Thank you, Father. Thank you for the baptisms this morning. We honor the new life that, you, that you're doing inside of these kids. We call forth more of it, God, in Jesus' name. Father, I bless everybody here. Father, I pray that they, they leave changed, encouraged, and mm, stirred up. We bless everybody and their Sunday in Jesus' mighty name.